Soraya Diase Kofeld is a lawyer and a former judge in the U.S. Virgin Islands. She says reading and a relationship with Christ led to her success. As a children's author, she now uses literacy to empower a new generation. Welcome yes, to the Harvest Show. thank you so much. All thank the you. way from St. Uh, Thomas, Thomas. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands. I, I think we're going to have a little snow here, so we kind of want to get on the plane and go back with You're you. You're welcome. You would be very welcome. <laughs> Just such a fascinating background. I mean, you were the state attorney for attorney a Attorney general uh, for a short time. Me, attorney general for a short time for um, U.S. Virgin Islands. Yes. And you ran for governor, yes. a lawyer, and a, a former judge. Yes. What led to all of that? You say that reading really played a major part into that. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother taught me and my four sisters how to read from a very young age. I started school first grade when I was four years old. And mm -hmm. I... Uh, see that as one of the main foundations for my success. Plus, I became a uh, born-again Christian when I was about eight years old, and mm. hence my passion for reading, my passion for ministering to children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about the saying, your mother told you what, that English was the language of opportunity? Yes, mm. yes. Yeah, both she and my father were, uh, f uh, or spoke English as a second language, okay. and they felt that English was a language of opportunity, so they made sure that my sisters and I only spoke English at home, hmm. and hence uh, the reading, the, the stressing of reading at home, and uh, I just know spending summers in the public library, and that's what my sisters and I did with my parents there as well on the weekends, mm -hmm. and again, it's as I continue with my career, and I take it back to when I was a judge, I served as a judge for six and a half years, and I had a lot of juvenile delinquents, mm -hmm. young men, especially Hispanic and African American, come through the courtroom. And I saw the, their extreme lack of literacy. And as my uh, profession continues and my career continues, and God continue, has showed me that this issue of reading is so critical and how it affects the crime rate. Because if we it have really our young men especially, because most of the crimes are committed by our young men, if they are able to read and they're literate, their opportunities are just overwhelming. But if mm -hmm. they aren't able to read, and that's what I saw as a judge in the courtroom, um, then they they drop out of school, become involved mm -hmm. in crime, and right. hence uh, yeah. no future really. Yeah, there, there's kind of a, a practical application of literacy where you know not having that skill or that ability mm -hmm. will severely limit your economic opportunities. Definitely, and opportunities. yes. But I think also, and I'm sure you, you, you've seen this as well, uh, there is a, uh, a, a, a benefit to the spirit, the soul, the, mm -hmm. the psyche yes. when literacy is there and prevalent yes. because now a child, someone growing up in formative years, can imagine and can go to faraway places That's and can, true. their whole world really opens up. Yes, yes. And just think about me growing up in Little St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands, and having access to books and being able to read, and that's what opened up the world to me. Mm -hmm. And then as I continue, um, I become involved with the children's ministry at my church simply because my pastor asked for adults to volunteer. They needed assistance in the children's ministry, and I had two sons attending the children's ministry, and I reluctantly raised my hand and said I'd volunteer. <laughs> and then that opened mm -hmm. up a whole new journey, and God showed me that that's one of the gifts he had given me. And mm -hmm. then I started getting these creative ideas to write my children's books. Okay, so it really is true that readers are leaders. Yes. I mean, because we hear that, that saying, but kids are less likely to spend time in jail if they simply yes. know how to read. Yes. Okay, so now you have three books here, and they start with It's Not About yes. You, Mrs. Turkey, Mr. Santa, Santa Claus, Claus. Or, um, and Mr. Pumpkin. Yes. So why start with children's books? Because, as I mentioned, I worked as a children's minister. Okay. I was a lay children's minister for over 15 years at my church. And I, you know, children are just so fun-loving. You have to have a lot of energy. And God started giving me these ideas uh, to entertain them and to teach His Word. And my first book is actually on Santa Claus. And that was performed as a play for Christmas in my church. I wrote it. It's a letter by a child to Santa Claus. You know how usually children will write letters to Santa Claus with mm -hmm. a list of gifts? Asking for yes, things. Yes, asking for things. But this one is a twist on that where the child tells Santa Claus that Christmas really isn't about him, but about Whoa, the, greatest, well, <laughs> the greatest gift of all is the baby Jesus. Okay, that must have been a, a blow to uh, Mr. Santa <laughs> Claus. Oh, he loves it. He's eating cookies and drinking milk and relaxing. As, as he's reading the child's letter. Now, I know that you go throughout your city um, reading to, to yes. kids. I mean, what's the impact just having someone with your background mm -hmm. knowing that you're mm -hmm. there to help them 
I mean, because you could easily look at these kids 10 years from now in a courtroom. Yes, and I'm very passionate about it. I read at Head Start programs, uh, elementary schools, at low-income clinics, and I, I mentor children by reading, but also I, I realize that by reading at these clinics, I'm out there in the waiting room with the parents, and the parents started coming up to me telling me they never heard an adult read a book like that to a child. And I realized I'm not only mentoring to children, I'm mentoring to adults. Mm -hmm. And you can give a child a book, but who's going to be the critical component in that whole arrangement but the parent, making sure that the child reads the book. Let me, let me uh, just jump in here with this. Because yes. I'm thinking right now, I'm, I'm tapping into <laughs> someone who's watching this show and saying, okay, Soraya, you're an attorney general. You're a judge. Yes. You're an attorney, a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Aren't you kind of wasting your time yes. reading to children. I've heard that over and over. Uh, why are you uh, writing children's books? That's a real waste of your mm -hmm. time. And I respond, God gives us so many different gifts. Mm -hmm. And this is a gift that God has given me and I feel compelled and as I mentioned, very passionate to speak about this gift. And uh, I'm almost like a lone voice out there speaking about how important literacy is mm -hmm. and how we're looking at the increased crime rates. Well, the most effective way to decrease crime rates is to have our children become literate. Adults too, right. but especially our children, and to start very young. And it involves the parents, as I mentioned, the child, and the whole community understanding how important literacy is. And I'll go as far to say that literacy is important to God. When Shadrach, Meshach, yes. and Abednego mm. were selected to serve in the king's palace, they were selected because they were well learned. Yes, How definitely. did they learn? They had to actually read. Yes. I did establish a nonprofit foundation, and mm. God gave me the slogan, reading helps children achieve their divine destinies. Because mm -hmm. without reading, you're not going to achieve the destiny that God has for you. Mm -hmm. So if that's why, again, it's a passion, uh, the desire to continue to speak about the importance of literacy. And what, what, uh, what's in your, your heart? What, what plans do you have to kind of really take this mm -hmm. and to be, begin to build some a momentum, a movement yes. to uh, reintroduce literacy, maybe 100% literacy across uh, across the United States, yes. across the, the, the developing world, whatever it may be. Yes. Well, um, I do a lot of research, and I see how important this issue is, not just to, the, to our Virgin Islands, but to mm -hmm. the United States as a whole, as we see the increase in the crime rates. And then I research and look at the countries that are the most literate, which Denmark, Sweden, and it, there's a connection between literacy and corruption. So the more literate the people are, the less corruption mm -hmm. there is, and the more transparent their government is. Mm -hmm. So you're not only affecting their lives, uh, their future, their destinies, but also the, the entire society yeah. and the government, making it less corrupt and more transparent. Okay, now talk about the importance of parents listening to their, chil mm -hmm. to their children or their child yes. read. I remember my mother saying, get that book, come here. She would cook dinner and I would have to read to her. Yes, mm. definitely. <laughs> and I, I, I have a website, I blog once a week, and I try to encourage parents how important it is to take your time, set aside time during the day, plan it out. Don't just leave the day to, to work itself out. Plan out that you're going to read to your child every day. Take them to the library on the weekends. People say, the library? The libraries have so many wonderful activities. And actually make it a concentrated effort to continue with reading, introduce it and continue with reading, making it a part of your everyday life. Okay, you can see this book is open. I'm going yes. to give you about 30 seconds to introduce us to, it's not about you, Mr. Turkey. Mrs. Turkey. Uh, Mrs. Mrs. Turkey. Mrs. She's Turkey. She's wearing curls and she has lipstick oh, on. Oh, okay, there you go. <laughs> go ahead. Okay, go ahead. dear Mrs. Turkey, this is a letter from a child to Mrs. Turkey about Thanksgiving Day. Dear Mrs. Turkey, Thanksgiving Day is one of my most favorite holidays. Of course, you are the star that day in a lot of places in the United States, and you sure do taste great. But a turkey is not what Thanksgiving Day is truly about. Thanksgiving is made up of two words, thanks and giving. And that's my, why my letter, or I'm sorry, that's what my letter to you explains. I'm a kid who loves to eat. And what's the best day of the year to eat and eat and eat? You guessed it. Thanksgiving Day. Oh, thank you so much, Soraya, and thank you so much for the work that you do in thank promoting you. literacy. I appreciate very, the time very to be on the show. Important. Yes. To connect with Soraya, go to asthestarsofthesky.org, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Asthestarsofthesky.org, or go to harvest-tv.com for a link to her new project, It's Not About You, Mrs. Turkey. Coming up later, your prayer request, but up next, Drew Summerall and Brian Bush join us from Jerusalem with the Lassie Tours update 
Tate. We'll be right back.